Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all students and a very good afternoon. Okay, so this is my first session of our class online. Um, for testing purposes, I would like to uh, conduct the teaching in a form of like uh, revision for the past content that we did uh, before the pandemic happened. So in this case, you are able to get access to this video. Hopefully, this will help you to prepare your study for the midterm exam. So this is my first time doing an online class and I am using all the resources that I have in my house. So some of you might think that my voice are not that clear or the video is kind of like my video is kind of like uh, blurry or something like that but please bear with it I'm trying to prepare all the equipment uh, better equipment in the future so for now let's take a look at what we did before the COVID-19 previously so I start with the model 4 physical layer so what did we do in the physical layer before? So basically, we discussed about the purpose of the physical layer in the TCP-IP uh, model. So the purpose of the physical layer is basically for the physical connection so that you can uh, have a connection between one, net, one device and one device in a local network. So before any network communication can occur, a physical connection to a local network they need to be established first. So this connection could be either wired, wireless, depending on the setup of the network that you want. So it generally applies whether you are considering a corporate office or a home. So the network interface card usually connects the device to the network. So some devices may have just one, while others might have multiple network interface card. So for example, like your smartphone, you have multiple network interface card with some of them uh, can get access to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi at the same time. So not all physical connections offer the same level of performance. As you know that we have our internet connection in Malaysia, we have some of you have streaming, some of you have Unify, some of you have broadband, as we experienced during the pandemic here, COVID-19 pandemic here. So most of you guys could not get a good access to the internet. So that's why I'm working on this video. So this demonstrates that all, not all physical connections can give you the same level of performance. It's sometimes very influenced by the amount of money you pay. So the purpose of the physical layer is basically to transport bits across the network media. So accept a complete frame from the data link layer and encodes it as a series of signals that are transmitted to the local media. So this is the last step in the encapsulation process. So if you see in the TCP/IP protocol, okay, we convert data to words and edited frames. So you notice that from the data inside the transport layer, they put they insert a TCP segment inside the internet layer, they put it. Uh, IP header so you become IP packet and then after that they put an Ethernet header and become an Ethernet frame before it being launched out of the uh, out of the uh, sender towards the receiver so all of this inserting the TCP segment the IP packet and the Ethernet header the IP frame the IP header IP address and also the Ethernet header this one creates an encapsulation process that creates the Ethernet frame so the next device in path to the destination receive the bits and they re then and they re-encapsulate the frame. So then they decide what to do with it. So <coughs> the characteristic of the physical layer. So basically the physical layer stands at the bottom of the TCP IP model. So all of the above of the physical layer, most of the are implemented based on software and governed by the IETF. This is an organization that supervises the standards of the networks that we have in the world. So only half of the data in here and the physical layer are governed by the organization that manages the hardware standards. So basically we have 
one of the famous one is IEEE where they provide standards in physical connection like for example your RG45 connectors to your laptop, your Wi-Fi uh, signal standards and everything like that. So physical layer standard address three functional areas. So the first one is the physical components, encoding and also signaling. So the physical components are the hardware devices, media and other connectors that transmit the signals that represent the bits. So hardware components like NIC, interface and connectors, cable materials and cable design are all specified and standard associated with the physical layer. So in case you know, notice that I have been using the word encoding so much, so what exactly is this encoding? So is encoding converts the stream of bits into a format recognized, so recognizable by the, the next device in the network path. So this coding provides predictable patterns that can be recognized by the next device. Example of encoding methods include, like for example, you convert a certain words into electrical signals using the binary. So the binary for 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. So they convert them into a high low voltage that been sent through the communication line from the sender to the receiver. So at the receiver, they will decode the electrical signals and they will reconstruct the message that have been given through this binary. So signaling is not that simple. So signaling usually they represent only either one and zeros and they use a physical medium. And if you know, physical medium is very, very, how can I say, fragile and sometimes they are, they are very influenced. They are often influenced by the, the condition of the environment for example, you have electromagnetic signals, or okay, lightning storms, or any other radio signals that have been give, uh, that have been distributed along the country, along the environment. So they will somehow influence your network signals. So the method of signaling will vary based on the type of signals being used. So electrical signals over copper cables, they usually doesn't look as pretty as you thought. So usually this is the signals that you can see. Even though your source might look like this, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, it can be altered and it can be influenced by a lot of things and created something like this. Okay, so we have light pulses over fiber optic cables so that the limits, the constraints that we have inside the electrical wires. So other than that, we can even use uh, like your radio frequency, AM, FM, okay, a PM, and something, all others, microwave signals over the wireless communication platform. So usually when we talk about the, the performance of the network, the physical performance of the network, we usually talk about the bandwidth. So bandwidth, what exactly is bandwidth actually? So bandwidth is the capacity at which a medium can carry data. So digital bandwidth measures the amount of data that can flow from one place to another in a given amount of time. How many bits can be transmitted in a second? Physical media properties, current knowledge and the law of physics plays a role in determining available bandwidth. So usually you will, when you see about the internet where Okay, these uh, services provide 10 megabits per second or 100 megabits per second. So they represent how many data can be transmitted at one time. So this represents the performance of your internet or your network that you have. So in bandwidth, actually we have three terminology that you need to focus on. So the first one is latency, second one is throughput, and the third one is good put. So what exactly is latency? So latency is the amount of time the delays for data to travel from one given point to another. Throughput, the measure of the transfer of bits across the media over a given period of time. Good put, okay, basically the measurable, the measure of usable data transferred over a given period of time. 
So what is the difference between throughput and goodput? So throughput and goodput. Okay, uh, goodput means the data that is really need to be sent. Throughput means all the data. So it might include the IP header, it might include the internet header, it might include a lot of segment station. It's not the real data. Good put means the usable data that you given to the internet and being sent at one time. So usually, if the line is small, throughput is high. Even though the throughput is high, doesn't mean that good put is high now. Okay, it might be congested with a lot of unusable data inside the network as well. So usually when we talk about our physical communication that we have in this country, we are in Malaysia, so we know that we have a lot of copper cabling involved. So copper cabling is the most common type of cabling used in our network. So it's not that expensive, it's easy to install. A lot of technicians have been trained using the copper cables, uh, using the copper cables installation equipment, and they have low resistance to electrical current flow, but not totally immune to it. So limitation of it is that it is it it had a problem of attenuation where the longer the electric signal has to travel the weaker they get. Good thing in Malaysia we are not as far as we thought from each other. So we have around four hundred to one hundred kilometers or something like that. Okay, we have uh, a lot of our cities is separated around 100 kilometers, something like that. So we have a lot of stations to boost those signal along the way. Okay, so the electrical signal is susceptible to interference from two resources, uh, which can distort and corrupt these data signals, which is the EMI, which is the electromagnetic interference, and also radio frequency interference (RFI), and also sometimes related to crosstalk, where you have multiple cables connected to each other, connected close to each other. So, in order to mitigate this kind of problems, okay, we have a strict, strict adherence to cable length limit for mitigating the attenuation, and we have some kind of copper cables mitigate EMI and RFI by using shieldings and groundings. So, some copper cable might mitigate crosstalk by twisting opposing circuit pair wires together as well. So, this technology already available, okay. And they are currently being used around you. So the types of copper cables that we have, okay, the first one is we have unshielded twisted pair UTP cable, and then we have shielded twisted pair STP cable, and we have the coaxial cable. So usually that you have inside your laboratory in our universities, okay, in cyber cafes, they usually use the UTP cable to connect all the computers. So in a place like server room where you have a lot of cables around laying around, you usually use a shielded one to provide uh, to provide uh, less influence between uh, of radio uh, electromagnetic interference influence uh, among the other cables. Okay, and then we have the coaxial cables. So coaxial cables is usually intercity cables that they provide a higher bandwidth, but uh, they have a very good durability. Okay, so usually this cable, they go underground or they go in the very, 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 very remote places to connect the internet from one city to another. So for UTP cable, is the most common networking cables. Okay, they are terminated with the RJ45 connectors. So the characteristic of the UTP cables, okay, they have an outer jacket, okay, which is the number one here, that provide protection for the inside cables. So these inside cables are the one that carry the data. So each of them carry a separate type of data. So when we connect from one uh, place to another, you have to properly attach this cable so that the signals cannot be uh, misread or okay or you miss or there will be a lot of errors in your networking later on. So we have the next one is the STP cables. Okay, they are functioning similar to the UTP cable, but uh, with an extra protection jacket outside where they use some kind of like uh, element, uh, like a metal foil shields to provide the EMI and RFI protection. So <coughs> in case you are using uh, a lot of wires in one place, they are not. 
uh, going to interfere with each other so that your signals can be uh, can be produced more beautifully, more pretty, and without any problems later on. Okay, then we next we have a coaxial cable. So this one, okay, uh, consists of the outer jacket. Okay, this one is to prevent the physical damage, and then you have a copper open brace to provide a protection from EMI and RFI, and then you have a plastic insulation. This one to make sure that okay, uh, the core remain untouched, undisturbed from any other impacts or something that may interfere with the uh, the core performance. Okay, okay, so the copper core. Okay, they transmit the electrical signal, okay, like the SDP cables, okay, towards the from the source to the destination. However, this one only being used for large device, for networking large uh, large networking devices like antennas, okay, a very intercity intercity or intercity uh, networking equipment. So usually they don't use a conventional connectors. They use uh, not a conventional connectors that you have in your PC. They use some what we call coaxial connectors okay so usually they are being used for premises wiring like for example in your apartment your whole apartment complex okay your offices uh, your office complex not between the pcs or uh, from the wi-fi router not not exactly from the wi-fi router exactly so they are using to connect the large networking equipment so when did we want to create the cabling okay for example the utp cabling so usually the utp cabling they have four types of wires they have brown stripe brown green stripe green blue stripe blue and orange stripe orange so usually they are being created pairs okay pairs so and then they are twisted together according to your pairs so this one is for cancellation uh, of the EMI and RFI signals. So these wires, they use opposite polarity. So one wire is negative and the other wire is positive. So each pair represents one pair of negative and positive. So they are twisted together and the magnetic fields effectively cancel each other and the outside EMI and RFI together. So the variation in twist per foot in each wire Okay, each wire is twisted a different amount, which help prevents the crosstalk among the wires in the cables. So the UTP cabling standards and connectors are usually supervised by certain uh, association. So standard UTP are established by the TIA, EIA, okay, and then they use uh, standards like to determine the cable types, cable lengths, connectors, cable terminations, and the testing methods for these cables. And then we have the IEEE that put the standards of the performance of the cables. So some of the cables, they categorize it as category 3, category 5, category 6, depending on the performance that we provided by these cables. And all these cables, especially the UTP cables, they use what we have, what we usually see as RJ45 connectors and RJ45 sockets. So all your PCs, okay, all your network cablings that between your PCs, usually they are connected with RJ45 connectors, okay. And in order to create this, uh, to attach these connectors to a uh, uh, to the PC, you need to have a proper header, a proper proper header connected to the cables, uh, a, a header, a RJ45 header to connect to the cables properly. So you need to make sure that all this cabling is properly terminated at the connectors cable, connector header. So we have two types of UTP cablings. Okay, first one we have a straight through, and the other one we have a crossover. So the straight through, build, uh, both of these cables, they end with a T568A connector header. So if you see the T568 and T568, 
a b and t five six eight a and t five six eight b the difference is in you see the orange and the green wires connection okay so the difference here if it's is it's uh, an internet straight through okay internet straight through cable which is connection between host to network device okay they usually has the same end either t568a or t568b okay for example if you have an internet crossover okay one end will end with the a and one end with the b which is host to host this is used for host to host switch to switch or router to router okay so <coughs> this uh, these two types of cable these days it doesn't mean much okay previously like 10 15 years ago they do meant a lot uh, when you attach those cables between the pc but these days i think uh, our technology these days they have uh, some kind of like uh, uh, software that can help you detect automatically whether it's a straight through or crossover and then they will configure the network software to just uh, according to the standards that they detected like for example if it's a if it's straight through okay they will use certain software uh, set a uh, software a to get all this data or if it's a crossover they will use software b so that any kind of cables these days they can connect with the computer perfectly between each other um, using whatever Ethernet cable as long as it's an RG45 net cable uh, so this one usually uh, we uh, they have what we call a legacy due to most NICs using auto MDX MDIX to sense cable time and complete connection so this one it doesn't have to worry whether it's a straight through or crossover anymore but if you are using older cables they might uh, older PCs they, you might need to uh, to check first whether that cable is a straight through or crossover before you connect between each other. Okay, and then uh, Cisco has their own connection, connects the cable between all the device, which is what you call a rollover cable type. So this one is for host serial port to router or switch console port using an adapter. So this one is basically standards by the Cisco. So fiber optic cabling, okay, this one is the most latest one and the most common one that we have these days. So fiber optic cabling is different than the UTP cables because uh, basically they don't run on electricity. They run on LED or light pulses, okay, LED or lasers. So these light pulses, they transmit either it's a 1 or 0 based on the light on and off. So they transmit as a waveguide between two ends so one end they have a transmitter it looks like a laser or led they are blinking and at the other side they have something like uh, sensors that detect all these uh, lights that come through the cables so since it's going to use a uh, total light uh, light pulses in the cable so they are totally immune from emi or rfi so that there are no problems of them having connected close by to each other because they will not interfere each other in terms of electromagnetic interference. So we have two types of fiber. First one is a single mode fiber and the second one is a multi-mode fiber. So the single mode fiber is a very small core used expensive lasers. They use as expensive lasers and this one is a long distance application. And multi-mode fiber they use larger core, uses less expensive LEDs and these LEDs they transmit at different angles so that they can bounce within the the uh, the fibers and they can go up until 10 gigabit per second over 550 meters only okay so dispersion refers to the, the spreading out of the light pulse uh, over time and increased dispersion means increased loss of signal strength so multi-mode fiber has greater dispersion than single-mode fiber because the light has been bounced multiple times. So with, um, with uh, the maximum cable, distance from multi-mode fiber is only limited to 550 meters before they are connected to a booster that can boost again the signals towards uh, longer distances. 
So the fiber optic cabling, they, they are used for enterprise networks, fiber to home, long haul networks, and some money cables networks. So this is for basically for uh, four main purposes that we have fiber optics these days. So for enterprise network, backbone cabling for infrastructure devices, fiber to home is basically what the internet connects so what the internet connects through to your home okay so from your home it might be connected to the UTP cable but towards your home from the by the internet service provider so they are using the fiber uh, fiber cables as well and for long haul networks between uh, cities between a lot of countries okay uh, if you have a uh, inter countries uh, internet connection as from internet providers they usually use a long haul networks and this long haul networks usually they are for redundant access as well. For example, if one country network cables is disrupted, so they might bypass those disruption area through another country and going back to the country through another route using this network. So there are a lot of purposes here. And the fourth one is submarine cables network. So this one is for us to connect to the countries outside of your own country. So basically, for example, we are in Malaysia, they used to connect to Japan first before they access to the United States. So we have one here, like for example, in Pahang here, you have one in Kuantan. Uh, the, the, the station is in Kuantan that connects to the Sabah and Sarawak area and also for Japan. Okay. So for this for this course, we will focus on the enterprise first. So we have a lot of a lot of types of fiber optic connectors. We have the straight tape connectors, we have lucent connectors, and then we have subscriber connectors, and we have duplex multi-mode connectors. Duplex multi-mode uh, lucent connectors. So also, they have all of them. They have a uh, patch cords, okay? So you have SC, SC, MM patch cord. You, now you have the LC, LC, SM patch cord, and then you have ST, LC, MM patch cord. So this one, they have different header, so that you can connect between uh, different different connectors, so that you can connect between uh, another one device to another device. So they have uh, a lot of uh, standards according to these cables. So a yellow jacket usually is for the single mode fibers and the orange one is usually for multi mode fiber or sometimes even an aqua color. So as you know we have the fiber and the copper for your internet connection. So the fiber which is the UTP cabling usually they support 10 megabit per second and 10 up until 10 gigabit per second. So the distance is relatively short, between 1 to 100 meters. They are not immune to EMI and RFI, they are not immune to electrical hazards, okay, and then they are, uh, they are uh, cheap, however they are cheap. So they are usually used for media and for a lot of connection inside one organization, so because they are cheap. And the installation skills also uh, at the lowest installation skill, maybe you can do even do it by yourself at home and the safety precaution is also the lowest involving almost no risks on okay and then we have the fiber optic cabling okay so fiber optic cabling, cabling they can transmit between 10 megabit per second up to 100 gigabit per second so they can go up until 100 kilometers okay 100 kilometers one from one up until 100 kilometers they are immune to EMI RFI, they are immune to electrical hazards. However, they are quite expensive. They, are, uh, they, are, they need a properly trained technician to install, to maintain all these equipment. And to maintain all these equipment, they really need a very high safety precautions. And uh, finally, Another media that we have, other than the copper and the fiber optic, is the wireless media, which I think most of you are very familiar with. Okay, so when we talk about wireless media, you only need to think about four things of the limitation of the wireless media. The first one is the coverage area, the second one, the interference, the third one is the security, and the fourth one is the shared medium. So coverage area means that how far your Wi-Fi signal can go. Interference means that 
Okay, uh, how many device can interfere the wireless signals? Okay, if you have too many signals, sometimes the interference caused by another signals can interrupt your wireless signals as well. Then it's a concern about security because anybody who can get the signals can basically can access, possible to access your signals. So you cannot get like targeted uh, Wi-Fi by Wi-Fi router targets only one location or they are widespread to around a certain area and anybody who can get access to that wave, to that signals can get access to your Wi-Fi basically. And then the fourth one is the shared medium. So wireless LAN basically operate in half the place, which means only one device can send or receive at the same time. So if you have a lot of people using the Wi-Fi signals, okay, using a Wi-Fi connection at one time, okay, and a lot of people using it for a lot of things at one time. Like for example, you are in one hall, okay, in university during convocation, okay, you are in one place, one hall, and the Wi-Fi access point is only limited to a certain, certain amount of users to work perfectly and all of you connected to access the internet and we have a problem with the bandwidth later on so when we talk about the types of the wireless media okay i think most of you guys are familiar with wi-fi so wi-fi basically is a variation of a wireless media so in the IEEE standards, they are usually mentioned as one IEEE 802.11, so which is a wireless LAN technology. And there are a lot of other wireless variations, like for example, Bluetooth, WiMAX, and Zigbee. So we have recently we have Sigfox, LoRaWAN, and a lot of a lot of IOTs involved uh, involving network as well. Okay, and then we have uh, Bluetooth, which is 802.15, and then we have WiMAX 802.16, and we have Zigbee 802.15.4, which is somehow a variation of a little bit variation of the Bluetooth. Okay, so so these are a lot of standards involved, and you can keep in touch with these standards if you are following the IEEE's uh, publication, uh, IEEE's journals. Okay, there are recently a lot of things a lot of uh, wireless uh, standards exist these days and recently about the issues about the 5g we have a lot of research coming on regarding the, the these standards so for wireless line two things that you need to have a connection of wireless local area network is that you need to have an access point and a network interface card connectors okay access point means that the one that connects the host towards the network infrastructure and IC adapters is the adapters inside the host so for example for your phones you already have a Wi-Fi adapter so that you can just push one button and you can get connected to the Wi-Fi your laptop as well so in case you doesn't have a certain certain adapters okay you cannot get possible to get access to that network that signals easily so you might have to put in another adapters uh, externally to attach to your device so that you can get access to that signals. So there are a number of wireless LAN standards. When purchasing wireless LAN equipment, you must to ensure compatibility and interoperability between all these devices and all these standards. So network administrators, you must develop and apply stringent security policies and processes to protect your wireless LANs from unauthorized access and damage. We don't want anybody to get access to your wireless network easily. Okay, so this one you need to be uh, to be uh, cautious all the time in case you are using your you are managing a wireless access point. So I think uh, for today the course is up until. Uh, this part okay uh, for this chapter is we have already finished and we have some, some exercise for you to do okay please log in into your Google classroom account and look into module 4 where you can look uh, for the packet tracer exercise we already upload the APK files we upload some uh, Microsoft documents for you to conduct the exercise by yourself the instructions are already provided there so I will later on might uh, will 
actually uh, create some videos to demonstrate to you about how to connect to the uh, how to, to to conduct the lab in the packet tracer uh, later on and i will share you uh, using another youtube video like this one as well so please make sure you download all those lab uh, lab sheets that are provided with the microsoft documents and please uh, do the lab sheets by yourself Okay, uh, they are not necessary for submission, but for your studies is quite important since all the things inside the lab, uh, lab sheets that are provided for you, okay, the elements inside there will be asked inside your assessments later on. Okay, so we have around uh, one lab and one package. Okay, so uh, that's all for today. Okay, so please make sure you conduct all the tests uh, for those uh, uh, for this module uh, for your exercise for this module. And again, okay, please log into your net account. Okay, so please log into your net account account. And for further reference, please refer to your net account account. Uh, that we registered uh, net acad classes that we registered for you before so in case you have forgotten it you can launch your course and you can check again inside your modules and we have your your network course available for you okay anytime that you want as long as you have an internet access in case you cannot get if you doesn't have an internet access most of the time you can download the slides that I have provided here, okay, in your Google Classroom page later on. Okay, so here is an example of your net, network, uh, net account, uh, your course content inside your net account, uh, account. So you can open your physical layer, module 4, physical layer, and you can take a look at the content of your classes for today. So it's the same, almost the same uh, notes that we have, okay, between here, but we have uh, some exercise to check with your uh, understanding and even some interesting videos in this page. Unfortunately, I cannot share the videos through YouTube, okay, or to other things because this is protected by Cisco. As long as you have your net account, account and net account class registered, okay, you can gain access to all these resources as much as you want. And then uh, I will activate the quiz later on so that you can conduct your study by yourself anytime that you want. Okay, so that's all for today. Uh, stay safe, stay at home, and stay study. Assalamualaikum, very good morning, uh, very good afternoon to all of you. And I'll see you guys in my next class. Thank you.